And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple newcomers to the temple. On in the red in the red corner, the lead de the lead developer of our dying wor our dying world made using the RPG Maker software. The one and only he's not he's he's not the real folk blues, but he is the real Tron. Yeah. And in the blue corner, we have one of the premier voice actresses for this particular project, and and a master in the ancient art of making the boss uncomfortable. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good sister Knight. How you, Hello. How, how you two doing today? Why does she get that in her title description? Like I, I thought we <laughs> thought we were going over this. Every no, earlier. no, I think there. it fits. I Ev think it fits well. Everybody, yes. everybody in the everybody in the temple, everybody in the temple is my good brother or my good sister. I'm right, but I win. But she gets a but she gets a cool title, so she's cooler than me. I see how it is. Well, well, she's in Minnesota, and you're in. One one is Minnesota, one is Florida. So by laws of weather, yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, it's not it. locationist. It's just fact. Look, I'm a I'm a monk. Therefore, I therefore I am I am compelled by my vows to not lie. True. So. With the, with that in mind, I'd like to open with the humble beginnings. Now, mm -hmm. our dying world is which I'm which I'm going to I'm going to call OD Dub for um for for the fact that I am not paid by the syllable. <laughs> um, is is very is very much in is very much in the vein of console RPG classics. Um, so what I'd be so what I'm curious about is where is is where you is where you two cut your respective teeth on that on that particular style of play. Okay. Um. So I know, like watching a lot of people playing the game, they've they've uh, referenced it to to older games. Mm -hmm. But the, I guess the the funny thing is, I've played like zero uh, old RPGs. I've only started playing them recently, but. I've um I've kind of grown to to like the style with the turn based games. Mm -hmm. Um kinda of starting with Divinity 2, it's kind of just a recent thing for me that I that I picked up and then Octopath Traveler is another good one and I played some other indie uh, RPGs, but not really any too many uh, turn based ones. So uh, a lot of comparisons are actually just completely accidental in, in design. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we just both had, you know, good ideas that we wanted to implement and that's how that, mm -hmm. that's how that, that came about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know uh, my background in RPGs is a lot more prolific. Um, I mean, I played a lot of uh, I played a lot of Final Fantasy growing up. I played a lot of um, I'm a Fire Emblem fangirl, uh, <laughs> and I um, I grew up on like Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross. Um, Dragon's Quest, stuff like that. So I've I've always really had a fond um, memory of RPGs, and so being able to bring that into something like ODW is is very uh, fun for me. It brings back a lot of that nostalgia. To so, so to see people connecting with the game in that way is um, very satisfying for me. I don't hear people talk about Chrono Cross enough, in my opinion. Yeah, um... Chrono Trigger, I was like one of the people where if I played a game and then heard there was a sequel, regardless of what was said about it, I played it because I'm like, I want more. Um, and I, I like Chrono Cross well enough. I understand that people don't think it's as good as Chrono Trigger, but Chrono I really Trigger like it. Is a sw Chrono Trigger is what, uh, is, is what I call a sweet rifle. Um, a r it's trying trying to um trying to trying to stack it trying to stack any any um follow up that comes after that is going is going to be a little bit unfair especially since it's first off it did first off it didn't have the quote unquote dream team and se and second off it's trying to do something significantly different instead mm -hmm. instead of that instead of that hybrid setup and 
I I remember I remember seeing some people say that it should have used the same battle system, except even in sprites that um, battle system from Chrono Trigger. The reason they never that nobody did that again for years was of how much of a nightmare it was to program. Right, and I just I heard that it was really hard. Um, yeah, from that aspect, so I I understood. <laughs> Now, grant. Now, granted, granted, some more recent games have actually have actually attempted that, like, like say, um, I am Setsuna. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I I played a little bit of that one. Yeah. But th but that ha but that has the adv that has the advantage of just better te of just better tech and more and tech that's more malleable, as opposed to a lot more forgiving. Yeah. Um, because that. At the time, at the time, Square was using their in, using an in-house programming language called, um, I believe it was called, I believe it was called Sigil, which is an acronym for something. But I, um, I am not sober enough to remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the or, when it comes to the origins, how did the idea of doing our dying world really get underway? Um, it it, it kind of came from a lot of mix matches of uh, ideas when I first started the engine, which um I got into RPG Maker actually because mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be a video game developer. <laughs> I was watching the the Philip DeFranco show. And he just casually mentioned the um, the the RPG Maker engine was on was on uh, like a Steam sale, mm -hmm. and said, "Oh man, I wish I could make a game, but you know I could buy that. But with what time?" And I'm like, "Well, hey, I got time. Let me let me check this bad boy out." And I I uh, I tried out VX Ace first, and I made a, a really really bad game, just mocking my uh my friends. I guess I'm a bit locationist it too because it was called uh, Canada Quest. And the whole game was venturing through Canada, shitting on every aspect of it to kill the final boss, which was my one Canadian friend. And uh, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, that was super cool. And nobody got through that game, by the way. It was it was great. I put like five days of work into it. Mm -hmm. No, oh, one it. but that's but it's for the best actually. That game that game shit, and we will never see the light of day. Oh. But uh, after 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 doing that, I started to say, hey, you know, it'd be cool to do like. An actual game. So there was a very, very early version of our dying world called Legends of Light that'll also never see the light of day. That had um, two of the uh, main characters, Ashton, Cer well, three, Ashton, Cersei, and Max, really early versions of them. But then I'm like, well, this isn't good either. So I, I scrapped that and then I started uh, the second version, which was called the tournament. And that's sort of where our dying world really started to to form was like there was this tournament that was also like a ritual it made no sense but essentially a bunch of people get like teamed up to win this tournament and they get a wish and the world was dying and they a lot of people wanted to wish to save the world but some people wanted to like become god or something wasn't really well thought out either but with the idea of the world dying and then uh, another main character was added Riker into that version the the next idea was uh was finally our dying world and i started to really flesh out the story from there and add more characters and really um plant where i wanted the story to go and one of the, i'm pretty now given the given the amount of iterations were all of these on the same version of rpg maker or were or were you jumping between um versions of it as you they were so Canada Quest was back and was on VX Ace, but that's not it's a poo poo engine now. That's not good. So then I moved over to M MV and which is the current um engine I'm using now. So Legends of Light, the tournament and our dying world are all on uh MV. And MZ is out now. That's the newest RPG Maker engine, but I'm not upgrading to it cuz I think it sucks and is not that great for the price. It's a slight upgrade. All right, I I I got you. And a, a lot of for a, RPG Maker has a bit of an un, a bit of an unfortunate rep, a bit of an unfortunate reputation yeah. because, yep. because for a lot for a lot of people their set, their setup is lar is largely just 
the oh, the old Dragon Quest model, um, almost for almost mm -hmm. verbatim. And right. With but with the setup that you that you guys ha that you guys have, you're clearly do you're clearly doing um, other other things to differentiate it fr from that. Were a lot of these just experiments in previous um, attempts that that you get that um that just that just got refined with time um sort of it was more just working on um this project in particular mm -hmm. that we've been um refining because the the demo has been out for that's been this it's been getting updated and updated and updated to um the state where it is now which is i'm really proud of um has been going on for like two years now mm -hmm. um and that's where we've been improving. And I was actually having a conversation with uh, Knight earlier today about how we're really trying to... You're right. You're exactly right. RPG Maker does have a stigma. And I would say it's not fair, but, I mean, it kind of is at the same time. There are a lot of... Because it's the engine you go to when you're a new a new developer. And a lot of them will, will just be really cookie cutter with it and won't... Not even they don't even have to push the the en the engine to its limits, I guess. But you know they they use all the default assets that come with the engine, and um, I think a big problem with uh, RPG Maker developers is not even like I shouldn't say problem with them, but a problem with the with the genericness is a lot of them will just take the engine, make a simple game, and it's not even a bad game. It's just you know it's not like uh, a project they put like their heart and soul into and it was just another casual game for them but it's another game that's released into the RPG Maker field where you're like okay yeah that's just another RPG Maker game but like we're trying to you know really stand out and you know some people might just go that's just an indie game you know not even the RPG Maker label isn't necessarily bad I guess but it's definitely not 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 good either so it's like a middle ground is the way I look at it you yeah, know. and as far as I know, in any case, because um, I wasn't incredibly familiar with the RPG Maker even community before coming onto this particular project, mm -hmm. when I had heard of RPG Maker games, I was thinking of like the fan games that people made for YouTubers. So like mm -hmm. I'm thinking Markiplier and Jacksepticeye, like people used RPG Maker to make them fan games. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, like it seems pretty accessible. Um, but then I also thought of like some of the pixelated horror games that were also made off of RPG mm -hmm. Maker. And that's what I referenced. So like when I thought of it, I thought of like uh, Mad Father and The Witch's mm -hmm. House and, and games like those. So. And if I may play devil's if I may play devil's advocate from my own, from my own perspective of just seeing the tapestry, but not necessarily involved with any sort with any particular fandom per se, um, I would I would say that uh, that stigma, while that stigma is certainly there with RPG Maker, I do think I do think it's kind of dialed back with over the last few years. Especially since the, especially since there has been a much, much more egregious offender of late in the form of um, asset flippers on Unity. Mm, yeah, I, I, I think a big example of, um, I, I definitely think you're right. I think it's starting to to get lifted a little bit. Um, I think the release of Amori definitely helped, which just blew up. Um, uh, on the on the indie scene like you got big youtubers talking about an rpg maker game that um if you know the developers behind it like a, a lot of them are actually just very popular um and really talented members of the rpg maker community so it's really cool to see that they like got together and made this thing that just absolutely blew up it definitely helped um the rpg maker image showing like you know really cool games can still be made on here mm -hmm. and Within to fur to further go to further go on to that, um, it is ver it is very clear that there are that there are some th there are some things that you that your te that your team is do is doing to to kind of differentiate it from that Dragon Quest model. And the first one that I do find interesting is the um is the turn order setup. Or you have you have it you were at 
um, much in the much in the vein of say Final Fantasy X, actions that you end up taking determine <clears throat> turn orders for um, future turns instead instead of ju instead of just a static initiative setup. Right. How um, what w was the inspiration to do that kind of approach? It's um, it's actually um, a lot of I'd say like. Nah, maybe not 90, but like a really big chunk of uh, the combat system is actually Octopath like Travelers, like the boosts, uh, and that that's like a big system we we took from it, which was um, which was made by the that particular battle system is a plugin actually made by uh, an RPG maker developer uh, Olivia. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember her. I think it's Olivia Fallen Angel. I think that's her full like online name but she made the the battle system and as a big fan of octopath traveler um i was like oh my gosh yeah i'd love to to use this system but i i change it up in in some ways here and there and um because there's some you know i don't i think that the while playing it i was like this is really good but you know some things like this are really broken i want to change this and some things here i want to change that so that's how that system came about well let's get into that what were some of the things that you did change up um, a lot of, like, how you would fight bosses is, um, you would just, you would just have one guy just break his shield, mm -hmm. and then, um, one guy, you'd have, I'd have a, a guy in my party that was, like, an AoE mage, um, one guy to heal, and, uh, one guy to just break the shield. And I, the fourth guy didn't really matter. He was irrelevant. It could be anything because there's like eight party members, and it was just um, AOE the thing down, use the item, AOE it down, break the shield. It was just the boss fights like they lasted like 30 minutes, and you couldn't even see the enemy's health. You had to use one specific ability to even check on their health, hmm. which was really boring. And um, once you got that party set up, it was just a battle of numbers, and there was no like. You know, kind of ways you could, you know, be like, oh, I'm really smart. I did this combo. And uh, there might be different difficulties that might have changed that, but that's like an issue I had with the game is I would go into fights a little underleveled because I hated grinding and I'd win easily, but it was just a matter of like spending 40 minutes on a boss battle, mm -hmm. just waiting for his health bar to eventually hit zero, but not, not being in any real danger. Yeah. Um, now, when it, now, one of the other, one of the other things that is very, in my experience, very rare for an RPG Maker game is using voice acting. Um, mm -hmm. um, what, um, I'd like you to walk me. Th I'd like you to walk me through what brought you to the idea of um, doing a vo doing a voice acted RPG Maker project, <laughs> and just, subsequently uh... how how um how you either roped, bribed, or co or coerced Knight into the project. <laughs> yeah, I was good. I, as soon as you started using words like that, I'm like, oh, just how how I got her to do it. Uh, well, you know, when you're cr as charismatic as I am, you can just kind of, you know, charismatic, charismatic, char charismatic. See, I'm so good with words. I'm just making them up all the time. You know, you can just sweet talk your way um, into these situations. But <laughs> I started laughing when you asked the question of. Um, you know, it, voice acting is really rare, and a lot of people comment on it when um talking about uh the game. But it just started. I was like, oh, voice acting would be cool. <laughs> Let's try that. No experience whatsoever, and uh, you know, it could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. But um, I I think I just got insanely lucky with um meeting all the voice actors I did, mm -hmm. and uh for the project. And, you know, uh, Knight was one of the first ones, actually. And she originally just, you know, signed up for uh, to be a voice actor. And then I roped her into doing more and more stuff until she's, like, does, like, 30% of, like, the game's everything now. You she's in the credits, like, 30%? That's, like, a big number. Come on. That's, like, that's a big number. <laughs> I think it's bigger than that. Um... Right, like, 30, like, 31%. Oh my word! Well, well I, th I think I figured out who's the Abbot and who's the Costello in this relationship. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Um, yeah, so I originally saw Our Dying World as a casting call, 
on behind the voice actors of all places. And if you're it's a voice worst actor, site. don't use the, it. If you're if you're a voice actor, you know that it's the worst one. Um, but uh, I saw it and I was like, hey, this looks pretty cool. I auditioned for a character, and I didn't get the role. And I was like, oh man, that's a bummer. And uh, Tron commented on my audition. He was like, hey, I actually have this other character that I really think you should audition for. So I auditioned for that one, and lo and behold, I got Cersei. Um, so that was great. So when he first sent out the scripts for... Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I when, he, when he first sent out the scripts for the character, for us to do our lines, because we're all volunteers, um, it was a video file of the game footage. And... I looked at it and I went, hmm. And then I, I've had a lot of experience in theater and such like that. Um, you being from Minnesota would know we have a huge theater community here. Oh, oh yes. Um, Surprisingly, yeah, and, none of them have kicked me out yet. <laughs> well, uh, in this case, I, I looked at this video file and every form of your or their was the wrong form. And I was like, <laughs> hmm. I was like, hey, uh, this... This is, like, fine, but do you want, like, a script writer slash editor? Because yeah. I'm, I at the time, I was an English major. I've since become a single, I was double majoring at the time, and now I'm not anymore. But I love English and writing and, and stuff like that. So I was like, do you want help? And he's like, yes, please. And so I had a, <laughs> he had I a B in English at the time. I had a, had a B time. in English. Yeah, I, was a, I had a B. Yeah, that shit and, was not going so well. No, I, no. I, I, no. Got, I gotta ask this: Were you? Were, yes. Were you, were you the ty Were you the type of person who would get who would give your English teacher crap when there's typos in an assignment? Um, define crap because most of the time I would ignore it. But if it was like a glaring issue, it was usually um, like Miss Snore. You actually misspelled there in the third sentence of paragraph four. Okay, so but like. Not that nit nitpicky, but like if it was like a like misinformation or something, or or the sentence was just structured weirdly, I'd like cross it out and write the correct or like how it should have been written. About. You grade the teacher. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I can say I can safely say that you are not as petty as I was, because um, <laughs> I did I did it I did it once and then I got glared at and then I just kept doing it because it kept pissing off my te my teacher, and yeah. <laughs> the the um, culmination of this kind of thing is, word to the wise, don't put April first as the due date for an assignment. Yeah. Because yep. I submitted a thirteen-page paper in mirror writing. No, why? Because it why was April Fool's that? Day. You just in the 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 script of Star Wars or something at that point. Yeah, like the B movie film. Like, come on. Oh, that's too that's oh, I, too easy. And when it comes to practical jokes, I am an artist. That you know what, that's fair. I can I can I can if, appreciate if it, that. If it was the script for Star Wars, then then um one, it would have been a lot more pages, and two, um they would just they would just be able to throw it out as a gag. But if it's the actual assignment, they have to read it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Oh, I, before we before we get too off topic, I wanted to comment on when she said I I sent the videos of like the of like the cutscenes when when I remember vaguely when um when I'd asked me like okay so like um how what are we gonna like do the the scripts or whatever I just I was thinking in my head like oh fuck I didn't th I didn't think this far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that's i'm a i'm a very big cautionary tale of um before you want to do voice acting um make a script and really really plan shit out because i was just um like i said earlier i was like oh voice acting would be cool because this this is my like first ever like big project so it's it's a big one it was a big learning curve uh for me um yeah don't don't do that um get a script um have it like mostly done i'd say um you can have but you know be able to like get feedback on it and re revisions and get someone to you know proofread it check for spelling errors and all that and then hire voice actors for your characters that's that's when you want to do it not not before that's that's not good yep it, it just kind of is a little bit backwards i re mm -hmm. i remember i remember my mentor always always saying um 
the great the greatest innovations in the history of mankind were done by people who had no idea what they were doing. Sounds like a smart guy. Oh, That's not my word! Don't feed into his ego. Oh Lord. Yeah, listen, I'm I'm not the one with an ego here. Are you saying I have a power trip? No, he's saying that I do, and he's right. No, no, I'm saying Knight does. <laughs> oh, great, thanks. <laughs> oh, at least at least I at least I admit my at least I I admit I admit my own egotism. Um, and the and it, and um, a lot of a lot of that egotism comes from me abusing tall guy privileges. Amazing, oh. as you should. <laughs> yeah, knights a, knights a fucking knights a fucking giant, bro. <laughs> I'm not that tall. Uh, just she is. I'm just five ten. Not that tall. Everything's relative. <laughs> um. Look, I'm look, I'm the I'm a bad I'm a bad person to compare it to. I'm six six. Amazing. Oh my god. A giant among us. Bro, it must be harder to breathe up there. Ah ha ha! You're so funny. No, but I no, but I can tell no, you it's... that it's raining. It's spit on him! Spit on him! <laughs> nah, I, that won't work, bro. I got like three minutes to like dodge that shit. There's a there's three a travel time. Three minutes. I'm not short. Well, I mean, at least you admit it. Yeah, listen, bro. It's hard being a five nine guy out here. All right, it's hard. Yeah, I'll remember that when you need something off the top shelf. <laughs> I mean, if I if I jump for it, I got that shit. But like, unless it's like the, unless it's like the top top shelf, then like this is getting like... incredibly derailed. <laughs> yeah, that's I I feel like it's I feel like it's Sunday. Um, <laughs> when it now, um, when it comes to when it comes to the set when it comes to the the uh, setup that you ha that you have, um, obviously be obviously because of the sis because of the set the setup that you're do that you're doing. I, it would be fair of me to say that the abil the abilities of each party member are um assen essentially pre essentially predefined. You're not doing a whole lot of freeformness with this particular setup, especially since you're gonna have um, what looks like four um par what four party members in combat at a given time. Right. Um, with that with that kind of thing in mind. I would like I would like to go down the the uh, character li the character list as it is so far, and just okay. get just get a bit of a vibe as to what um what each character's particular archetype in ba in battle might be. Okay. So I'll I'll start at the top with Max. Okay. Yeah. Um. Max is uh is your typical like DPS warrior. That that's like that's his class uh in the game. Um. He's able to use swords and axes and 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 uh, combat. And he specializes in uh you know boosting boosting his attacks or his allies um attacks physical attacks for that matter I should say. Mm -hmm. Um. To to just des destroy like anything like any magic creature. Um, he's really good into, or um, it, like armored foes. If you swap to his axe, that's normally really good as well. And uh, later in the game, um, as well, he's really good at like if a if a foe has a lot of weaknesses, he's really good to um, figure those out with mm -hmm. with his magic. And eventually, he's able to use some magic, but he if he's typically not the best for that. All right, so so ma magic is essentially di is essentially a dip roll. All right. Yeah. Um, Riker. R Riker's just your your typical uh, tank, with the um, exception that he can use magic pretty early on. That's that's pretty handy against uh, a ground foes. Mm -hmm. Um, he you know he has the typical aggro and and uh, defensive buffs. I'd say out of all the characters. Uh, he's probably the the simplest to use. Mm -hmm. He's just a big uh, big damage soaker. Yep. And he's the one that everyone simps for. That's <laughs> very true. I don't simp. That's, the, that's breaking the that's breaking the eleventh commandment in the temple. Thou shalt not simp. I see. But you got a, a lot of rule violators when they see Riker, though. Just saying with the um, with the data with the data we've been collecting. 
you, no, you gotta honestly, keep was... uh keep your eyes peeled then around the temple okay um i'm just i'm just saying that there's there's a um there's a bit of there's a bit of a mo one of the mantras that we have here is is very simple head cannons get the head cannon <laughs> i like it mm -hmm. um next would be um ashton um so when you get ashton he's um a, at a lot higher level mm -hmm. uh than you which you eventually keep up and he's the uh he's the jack of all trades so ashton can heal uh he can shield allies with from magical damage when Riker can only do physical mm -hmm. um and he can attack pretty well with um his holy magic and uh so yeah, he could pretty much do basically everything, but the the trade off is uh, he doesn't do any of them particularly well. Well, well he does. Well, he's okay with them, but like when other people really excel at like shielding and and healing and attacking, um, they'll always be better for it. But he can he's pretty good in any situation. Pocket pick. Yeah, he's a, he's a good pocket pick. Mm -hmm. Um, Rena. Rena. Rena's your just your your typical your typical healer. Mm -hmm. She she can be um specced with um if you put the right items on her, she can do a ton of damage. Um but the, the thing with her is she's really squishy, so you really want to protect her in combat mm -hmm. because she can mass heal your party and uh her ultimate is uh, a full party revive, so if everyone else gets wiped, that's when she can really come in handy to just bring everybody back onto their feet. Um, but the, like I said, the downside with her is she, with healing, she's going to get a lot of aggro on her. So you really want to have Riker in your party. I'd recommend to, to protect her mm -hmm. and, uh, keep the aggro off of her. All right. Um, Zafriel. All right, Zafriel. So <laughs> un unlike a lot of other characters, Zafriel only has a, a few abilities, uh, in comparison to the others, but he can, uh, he can speed up himself or other allies, uh, speed in combat. Because he's really uh, quick, and but the down the upside with not having many abilities is all his abilities are the strongest uh, magical uh, abilities in the game with his lightning magic. So he's he's like the he's the glass cannon one shot build. You mm -hmm. typically go with him. Yep, and um, Cersei. All right, yeah. So Cersei's the the typical rogue of the of the party, and but she doesn't really. Poison. She uh she puts debuffs on on enemies like she'll slow their like she'll slow their uh, speed in combat or their attack or their uh, magic defense or regular defense by a percentage and um uh, she's also very good at not being hit. She has a lot of abilities to lose aggro. Mm -hmm. Um she has self sustain by she can steal mana from enemies with attacks. And um, the obviously the downside of her is she doesn't do very much damage except for her ultimate ability, which um, if you break an enemy shield and use her ultimate ability, it is a really good combination because she'll do a ton of damage with that mm -hmm. depending on her weapon. Yeah. Now, in a lot because of the fact that a lot of RPG Maker games are utilizing the Dragon Quest model. Um, a lot of times, new abilities are intrinsically tied to leveling up. Um, is <laughs> this is this the case with with ODW or it or um, are there some wrenches thrown into the mix? There, there's three ways to get abilities. the The main way to get a, uh, abilities is just to to level up. So, um, and not a, not even necessarily you have to grind. Like it's it's designed to where. If I want a character to have like a certain ability at this fight, they'll for sure have it by following the main story the main storyline. Mm -hmm. But they can um they can get it earlier by grinding, of course, if they want to, or doing some side uh, bosses or things like that. They'll be a lot more prepared for the main story missions. Um, the second way is to get to other points in the story, um, not just by e uh, exp, but um. Uh, during certain story beats, it, it makes sense that the characters would naturally get stronger and they'll unlock new abilities. Mm -hmm. So Max doesn't learn how to use fire magic until chapter, chap the start of chapter 3 of the game, because that's when he gets taught those abilities. 
And the third way, and the, the rarest way to get skills, is to do a certain side quest. But that's not technically in the game yet, that'll be in the future. Yeah. And they won't be necessarily really strong combat skills, they'll just be mis uh, misc things that will still be useful, but mm -hmm. not like in hey, and me broken, like, oh, you have to do the side quest, it's super meta. It's just a nice little thing to have as a reward. Yeah. You mentioned specking. Um, is, a <laughs> lot of, is a lot of that kind of setup um, rooted in your choice of equipment? Yeah, that's um that's where it comes down to. All the characters um uh weapons are locked to types, but the the weapon variety is pretty big and uh none of the armor is locked. So like some armor like will take away max health and and for stats and there's a bunch of armor for like tanky tanky gear, squishy gear, gear just made to like, you know, do a lot of damage but make you more vulnerable. So like a really good item, like I recommend that for Zafriel, just so you can like one shot the monsters before they can one shot you. I wouldn't necessarily put that on like Rena, for example, who is already really squishy and you want to keep her alive. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of um, full builds you can do with um, putting armor on people. So like if Rena is getting one shot, you could put armor that would naturally be recommended for Zafriel on her for like a really tanky healer that just never dies. Mm -hmm. That maybe slightly heals less, but is still really good. Yeah. And part of the reason that I ask that is what I know I keep I know I keep talking about the dragon the dragon quest um, formula but be, but because of the because of the fact that the default um, kind of game with RPG maker is is rooted in that that means a lot of that means a lot of those habits um, come with it as a package deal and one of the big ones is um, is the is the linear setup when it comes to equipment progression um, you know, usually, usually, ha usually, this one, per this one particular um, pa path of wet path of weapons and armor, and maybe, maybe, ex and maybe, ex maybe accessory types if you're lucky. Um, but, but it's all, but it's always, it's always on an upward path as you go through this, as you go through the um, story. That's how that's how that setup has largely been since, um, I'd say since three, since Dragon Quest one and two are. Sli are slightly different beasts, um, and as as a bit of an aside, that's the reason why FF 9s little AP system n didn't really work with me. Um, mm, gotcha. I mean, I I like the idea. I just felt it was in the wrong kind of game. But when it but when it comes now, given given what you given what you mentioned with with that, um. With, with would it be fair of me to say that e that each type of weapon and type and type of armor has a, has a significant leaning when it comes to strengths and weak when it comes to overall strengths and weaknesses so if you pick if you pick up a if you pick up say an axe you're gonna know what what it's gonna be good at and what it's not gonna be good at yep mm -hmm. I exactly so axes um they have a lower chance of of hitting for example especially early on. Like it's an eighty percent chance instead of like a sword that's like like ninety nine or or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the the trade off is they do a lot more damage, mm -hmm. and so you have to play with okay, well, uh, am I gonna go with a sword that I like that you know, I you know two hits uh, I can kill this guy with the sword, or am I gonna play it risky and just try to kill him kill him in one hit with the axe? So there's little things you can do with that. Um, and then another reason to swap weapons too is to is to break sh uh, break the shields on enemies, and because you know like I said axes do more damage and they're a different type of weapons so they're really gonna like tanky monsters like there's like some giant turtles in the elven forest you can fight and like swords are no good on them but you know axes are are really good yeah so that's an example now a big a big a big issue that can that can crop up. Especially, especially when you're, especially when you're dealing with equipment variety, is, the is um the is the is a need to pre, is a need to pre-plan or in some cases a need to a need to play safe, you, you know because somebody because you because, um a certain equipment setup may not may may not have worked when you when you're in the middle of battle, um, hmm. which is which is why a lot of people will just go for the most middle of the road um build po build possible. Right. Um. If when it come, 
do you have you cons have you considered ha having means of equipment swapping in battle, or is that not is that something that's not in the cards? Um, no, you can't equipment swap in battle. Um, however, in battle, you, I know that you can only bring four four party members into battle. But when you're in battle, you can swap out party members uh, in mid turn, and it doesn't use up their turn. So, like, let's say you're like, okay, well, for this guy, uh, you know. Riker isn't really working out, or some random character. Let me put in, like, Zafriel, for instance, just to, like, say a random name. Um, you can just swap him out really quickly, and his turn doesn't... Uh, Riker's turn isn't used up, and instead it's Zafriel's turn. Yeah. So you can you can swap on the fly. Of course, there's a cooldown for bringing people in and out, so you can't really cheese it. Hmm. But if you do end up losing that battle, um, instead of being put back to a save point, you have the option to retry the battle... And before you retry the battle, you can change up all your equipment in case you fail. All right. Now, one of one of the one of the major themes that you've been going with within the within the um, story is mm -hmm. this mystery of of mad of magic dying or magic um, fading from the world. Mm -hmm. um, what was the inspiration to do that to do that kind of approach? Um, like I like I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, and the uh, the version right before I started making our dying world the tournament mm -hmm. that was kind of that was kind of there. Um, I wanted people to like, I wanted the world to be to be to be dying in, in there as well, mm -hmm. but still have people working for for selfish goals. And I uh, I thought the the idea of of how it works is um uh. It's slight slight spoiler for the game, but it's it's so early on. It's not really a, a big thing. It's also everyone knows the world is dying, but I can just because obviously because of the name, but I can expand a bit more on uh, onto it. Um, the way it works is with magic slowly disappearing. Um, eventually, life will no longer be able to be created, so plants can't reproduce, humans, animals. So it'll eventually just be uh, starving to death for for most people. Um, which is really slow and 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 like awful. I thought would be a really cool way to like you know there's no fuck there's no sky beam, there's no oh we have to save the world right now. It's a it's a lot slower approach, which I thought would be really cool to put in. Yeah. And when it <clears throat> the other the other thing now um I I know that I know that Knight had, had um had es had essentially four. Um, forcefully, vo forcefully volunteered to have to help with script, but <laughs> is, it, is it a case when when it comes to the script where the where the two of you are where the two of you are bouncing ideas and checking each other? Yeah, um, I would say so. So what usually the process is 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 Tron will write the chapter, mm -hmm. um, and then he'll send it over to me, and I'll go through it and I'll edit it, and if I come across something that is like oh that doesn't really make sense with this character's motivations mm -hmm. or that that doesn't like it doesn't make sense to me i will screen capture it and i'll uh send it to tron um and then he'll either explain to me or he'll be like yeah i wasn't really i, I didn't really put that much thought into it i'm like well i kind of have to so what do you want to yeah, do instead yeah, and then I, it I, will, I will probably make me work look as worst as possible not like oh just to, yeah, that's a slight overstop i wasn't thinking uh, no, no, it's like no, it's it's pretty it's pretty good. And the thing is too, I tell him this all the time, so I don't know why he's getting all defensive. But like I would not have put so much effort into this project if I didn't think it had potential. Like the storyline is super well thought out. Um and I'm I'm very glad to be a part of it. So when I see something, I'm like, oh I'm pretty sure that's not what he intended. Let's let's find out. So I'll message him and I'll be like, this is what I want. And I'm like, okay, well maybe I think it would be better portrayed in if you did it like this. And mm -hmm. he can be like, eh, I like that, but maybe if it was more this way, and then we kind of workshop it until it gets to a point where we're both um content with the final yeah. product. And uh I I'll also say as well, um when I do put the scripts out uh, I, I do tell all the voice actors as well, you know, I, I really value their inputs as well. So um, if they're reading the script and they feel like, hey, I feel like my character would actually do this, um, I want them to tell me, like, absolutely. I'm, I'm very open to, to hearing their thoughts as well, you know, since they're voicing the characters. Uh, if, if they feel like anything should be played out differently, I'm definitely open to 
to doing that and and changing it that way but um i i don't think that's that's happened yet so nope. I, I hopefully everything's <laughs> going good and they like it yeah i think it's going well now with now with that with that kind of thing in mind i i realize that this question is is one of the is one of those questions that's very that's very tricky to answer especially especially with the advent of speedrunners because Someone will someone will speed run if they haven't already. Um, <laughs> what are you shooting for as far as as far as the total hour count for um, for the game? So for if you just want, when the game's fully done, um, there will be ten chapters in total, and we have the first three out as a, as a demo right now that we launched with the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm planning for each chapter to be if you. Uh, for, for a normal player, like around one one to two hours, around I would say one and a half to two hours per chapter. So you know, with ten in total, it'll be around twenty twenty two hours for like a normal player just playing through the game. Probably more because there'll be a lot of side content you can do. So maybe like thirty hours of of content. But for a speed runner, I'd I'd spitball like a six hour estimate. Because like you'll be able to skip cutscenes in the in the final release as well and all that. So if they just do that, I'd say like I'm pretty, six I'm hours pretty, start to finish. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the voice cast doesn't like getting doesn't like getting skipped over and is probably cur <laughs> is probably cursing the speedrunners for that. Oh come on, speedrunners! Well, they've played the game before. They I was gonna say usually by that point they've played the game and they understand the story moment. So I I can't afford to be offended. What I do despise though is when people go through the voice acting uh when they like i've even seen some not i'm not gonna call anyone out because it doesn't really matter but um i've seen some people who have played the game will like hit you know enter once they've read the line themselves instead of letting the voice play out which i'm like oh i'm sad i put a lot no, of work into the, that you it's, know it's the yawn and holding down a and you're like no 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 <laughs> yeah 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 But um, it, it shouldn't really bother me in terms of speedrunning, because at that point, they're just trying to get a time, and they're not really concerned with yep. playing it for the story. Yeah, yeah. I welcome the, the first person to speedrun it, for sure. Mm -hmm. I challenge I challenge them to beat my time. <laughs> you heard you heard, you heard, heard it. He said it, not me. What is your time? I don't know. Like, I think it's like two. I think the demo is like two hours. <laughs> It's I, a slow time. It is, but, but I, I, I'd love to first. see how how people optimize uh, optimize the runs with like using waypoints and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, with with that with all of that in, with all of that in mind, I know that you I know that you guys had put up a updated version of the updated version of the demo, um, mm -hmm. not too long ago. Um, is the is the overall plan that this that you're going to be releasing, um. Essentially, ch essentially, chap essentially chapters like how um, Edge of Eter like how Edge of Eternity did, or are or are you going to be releasing a um whole a the whole batch um down the road? Yeah. So the way the way it's working is for um we'll have play testers for the the chapters that are coming up in the future. So anyone that backed it on the Kickstarter, um certain members of the of the Discord and and things like that, like they'll be the play testers for the new um, upcoming chapters but I don't want to I don't want to release the any of like the new chapters publicly like when it gets to like chapter 7 and 8 I don't like want most of the game to basically be there and then uh, eventually you know because it would be free and and then you know when it's fully done be like okay well now it's five dollars on Steam so even though you experienced most of the game I want you to to buy it and go through that again even if I'm sure it'll be polished up more by then, but yeah, it's just for now. It's just gonna be um, that updated demo on uh, Game Jolt and uh, Itch.io, mm -hmm. and eventually when the full game is released, there will be um, a smaller version of the demo um, on on like Game Jolt and Itch.io. But the full version will be like five dollars on Steam with wow. all the content as as a fully released game. I don't really like the early access motto model. Not a fan. Yeah, I can, I can, I can certainly get, I can certainly get behind that, get behind that, and I do look forward to seeing how, 
the pro how the project takes shape. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to come all the way up to the temple. No problem. And anytime you guys see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're underage, though, Jaden. Don't you dare. I'll be the grandma. <laughs> Not yet. Why, why you gotta ruin everything for me, Mom? Uh, I, because I Just told you. Just have fun. <laughs> Nine. Legality. Oh. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>